um, again, happy Wednesday. Um, if you have any TVs on in the background or a cell phone, please silence them oh, so everyone's able to it. hear, please. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, if you can't hear me, see me, or hear the videos, please uh, um, unmute yourself and let me know. Um, otherwise, we do have uh, um, quite a bit to cover today. So please raise your hand if you, if you have a question and I will answer it at the end. Um, but before we get started, you know, I like to do a little overview um, of the week. So um, today is Wednesday, June 28th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's already. It's tapioca day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, you guys are able to see my screen, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So again, today it is tapioca day. So um, I haven't had it in a while, but you know, that picture looks so good, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I love uh, but, uh, Yes, today we'll be covering card games. So part two of the series that uh, I started last Wednesday, now the concluding on Friday. So I look forward to that. Um, we have the lunch club with Crystal covering her books. And we'll be ending with module five, learning how to use your keyboard and the DC Public Library applications. On Thursday, um, I'll be, again, I'll be covering the lunch club. And at 1.30, we're gonna have um, Washington Home again. They presented back in March on the Spring Gardening 101. But uh, um, tomorrow they will be covering the health benefits of house plants. Oh, so, okay. Um, that should you know, be interesting. So interesting. So it's the same as um, the same person as last time. So I was able to listen on that session. So she did a great job talking about uh, gardening. Um, last but not least, uh, on Friday, I'll be covering um, the advanced training um, and I'll be covering tile games. So part three. And uh, last but not least, we'll be doing module six. So learning how to add a virtual background. Um, other um, things regarding Zoom. So that is the time to ask questions about Zoom if you have a question about Zoom. Um, again, we always have the library flyer at the bottom of the agenda. So if you would like some in-person training, you can look at this flyer to see all of our upcoming and booked trainings. And um, June, it is also, you know, I like to do a little highlight every week. So June is National Oceans Month. National Oceans Month is a day in the United States that celebrates and raises awareness about the importance of the ocean and its resources. It's a time to highlight the significance of oceans in our daily lives, their role in the environment and the needs for their conservation. National Oceans Month typically takes place in June, providing an opportunity to promote ocean-related education, research and environmental stewardship. National Oceans Month is commonly celebrated through the organization of beach cleanups, participation in educational events, promotion of sustainable practices, and spread awareness uh, on social media. The goal of this month is to increase awareness, promote sustainable practices, and inspire a collective effort to protect and preserve our oceans for future generations. So yes, every week um, I do a little write-up of what's going on in that month. So it's just more information and something um, interesting uh, to um, learn. We have all the um, emails that you can email for assistance and the link to our recorded uh, videos right here. So yes, please check out this daily email, Monday through Friday. You're gonna see what day it is. You're gonna see if there are any changes and the library flyer um, changes every day and the highlight changes every week. So. Um, you may never know what you're going to encounter. <laughs> so yes, today we'll be covering um, card games. So one of one of you all gave the suggestion. So uh, thank you so much for that. And I found some games that I thought were really fun and uh, definitely train your brain. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to read our disclaimer. Wildtech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being, information designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information and any applications or topics made by Wildtech, including but not limited to mobile and device applications and any social media pages maintained by the Wildtech DC Senior iPad program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, 
or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. Again, if you cannot hear me or see me, please let me know, I'd appreciate it. Um, so today um, we'll be covering a little bit um, of the uh, history of card games, what are card games, how these games are in popularity, um, the app navigation. So today we'll be covering a mobile version of Crazy Eights, a solitaire game called Tiki, Solitaire Tri-Peaks, and Skip Bow. So the classic card game updated for all modern times. Last but not least, we're going to have an overview and a discussion. So um, we'll be answering some questions that I have on the screen, but also this is the time to ask me any questions if you would like me to go over anything. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, what are card games? <laughs> so uh, card games are games that are played using a deck of playing cards. Um, either the standard deck of 52 cards, number and face cards, or with specialized decks that have additional cards or uh, different cards altogether or unique rules. Some popular card games include a bridge, uh, which is a strategic game played by two teams of two, uh, focusing on communication and bidding. Um, there's solitaire a single player game where the main goal is to arrange cards in a specific sequence. Um, third is Remy, a group of matching card games where the goal is to form sets of cards. And another example is Blackjack, a casino game where players try to accumulate cards with a total value close to 21 without exceeding it while competing against the dealer. So. Um, if you uh, guys watch the Game Show Network, there's a show called Catch 21. It's literally a uh, version of Blackjack. I, I love watching that show, but um, it's just so cool how um, these card games that are very, very old are still relevant in our daily lives today. Um, some fun facts about card games um, that I thought were interesting. So. Um, did you know the King of Hearts is the only king in a standard deck without a mustache? So if I zoom in onto this picture right here, so again, it says the King of Hearts is the only king without a mustache. Oh, he's so done it. If you can, yeah, all the other ones have a mustache. I wish I could zoom in further, but if you look at the King of Hearts, no yeah. mustache. I see it. Isn't, yeah. isn't that interesting? Yeah, so I uh, too, the term wild card, um, originated from the game of poker, where a designated card can represent any other card in the deck. So all of the modern card games with the wild card can thank poker for that. Three, the Guinness World Record for the largest card tower ever built stands at over 26 feet tall, constructed with over 218,000 cards in 2010. Um, his name is Brian uh, Berg, and I found this video as well, um, just him talking about his creation. The thing that people want to see the most is the implosion, um, for a number of reasons. One, it's just cool. And number two, it, it dispels all the rumors about falsities. So when I knock the house of cards down, it, um, it qualifies the work. It's kind of like when a uh, <laughs> composer wow. dies, then their music becomes great. So um, for me, this house of cards here um, is everyone. Look at it, y'all. Uh, favorite at the moment, but <laughs> only when uh, it is. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is that's fascinating. But he's gonna so... blow it up. That's not cool. But he oh, said that's oh, the only wait, no, way no, to keep, validate keep watching. It. Flat <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> and dead and gone, it's will it kind of be point, so. this great this thing that everyone remembers? And it's because at that point, it will have become legitimate in the sense that it was proven to be real. So for me, the implosion is like the symbolic ending completion that, of the project. You know, I'm always very critical of myself and like what my work ends up looking like. So it took me a great amount of time to kind of figure out, you know, at what point does it sort of jog out a bit and then a bit again and then, you know, a bit again. How long does it do that and when does it go in and when should there be a, a soreness and all those kinds of little mannerisms. And it's, it's very difficult to get right. I'm not a very good card player. Oddly, uh, I've spent a, a lot of my life in casinos. I've seen some people play some pretty big money in the casinos. 
and it's been quite a rush just to watch that happen, no matter which way it went. I will play some slots occasionally, or you know, I might throw a few bucks down on roulette just to do it. It's really hard to resist. However, growing up, I did play a lot of cards with my grandfather, the one who got me started mm. stacking cards. But as far as me walking into a casino and sitting at a table for an evening, probably. Not. Um, uh... That was cool, right? So, yeah, that, uh, oh my, it was just like, did it say how long it took him? Oh no, I mean, I, I would imagine it like I, I can't even imagine how, like the patience well, well, like and you, the creativity. It days. Mm. It's, it, I, mean, so I, it's just, you, I can see you blowing it up, but leave it sitting there for a minute, <laughs> you know, for a minute to show wow. your masterpiece, you know, before you blew it up. Oh yeah, so uh, you know that that was just a cool video. So um, I'm glad you guys liked it. Um, the last fun fact I have for you all is the bicycle brand of playing cards introduced mm -hmm. in 1885 is one of the most recognized and widely used playing brand card brands in the world. So yeah, yeah. I remember seeing uh -huh. Bicycle growing up. So that just, you know, that just definitely makes sense because I've, I've seen it since I was a kid. So um, it's it's been a long time since that deck of cards has been out. <laughs> yeah. So yes, um, um, last up before our app navigation, um, I found a similar video like last week on um, how card games came to be, their origins and what card games look like today. Hi, I'm Andre Meadows, and this is Crash Course Games. Today, we're gonna to be talking about playing cards, gaming artifacts that have truly stood the test of time. These simple, small pieces of paper have been entertaining people for over a millennium. There's a countless variety of card games, from Go Fish to Yu-Gi-Oh to Solitaire, which you probably play once or twice on your computer when you're supposed <laughs> to be working. And if you need more proof that they're an unrivaled phenomenon, we even have a gaming mecca in the middle of the Nevada desert thanks to the popularity of gambling card games. There was even an entire family of cards that branched off hundreds of years ago and became the modern fortune teller cards we know mm -hmm. as tarot. The 20th and 21st centuries have seen a so rebirth cool. of the card game. Magic the Gathering helped create the trading card game craze, and games like Dominion helped popularize deck building games. So let's shuffle into the history of card games and see why they are so popular and what effect they have on people and culture. I want to start with the story of a man. Seth Manfield. Seth had a particularly great 2015. He played a life-changing card game, winning the title of world champion and walking away $50,000 richer. During the game, he commanded four siege rhinos, three din protectors, and even Tessiger, the Golden Fang. That's right. Seth was playing Magic the Gathering. And just like Seth, Joe McKeon also had a great 2015. Joe was the World Series of Poker champion that year. The 24-year-old from Philadelphia walked away with a cool $7.6 million after winning his first ever World Series of Poker. So how do we reach the point where people make a living playing card games Isn't professionally? That an amazing well, it turns out that many cultures and civilizations have always enjoyed a good game of cards. Let's go to the thought bubble. Most scholars agree that playing cards were invented in Imperial China as early as the 9th mm. century Tang Dynasty. 9th century These Tang Dynasty is when the first cards came out. So 800. So I want to play poker like that. I want to play poker like that. <laughs> it's been forever since uh, regular playing cards has come out. Yeah. 
Cars were originally based on paper currency of the time, but because using real money was inconvenient and risky, they substituted play money known as money suited cards. There were two varieties, Let Chi from the south of China that used four suits and Quan Pai that had a heavy focus on coin imagery. By the 13th century, the Persians had Ganjifa, which was probably introduced by the Mongols or traded on the Silk Road, and then the Mughals brought these cards to India in the 16th century. In India, the cards took on a circular shape that kind of looked like the game Pog from the 90s. And moving further west, the Egyptians had a card game known as Mamluk, which arrived sometime during the 12th cards. or 13th centuries. These ornately hand-painted cards were of Islamic origin and named after the Mamluk Sultanate of Egypt. A complete 15th century pack contained four suits, polo sticks, coins, swords, and cups, and three additional court cards, king, vice king, and second vice king. Gaming scholar David Parlett claims that Egypt's Mamluk entered Southern Europe in the 14th century, which is just one of many theories. But what we do know for sure is that France's King Charles VI purchased three packs of playing cards in 1392. These cards featured similar imagery to the Mamluk cards with cups, swords, coins, and batons, but also had 22 extra high cards that eventually became tarot cards used by mystics for mm, divination. And as so playing cool. cards travel to many European countries, their suits evolved with them. The Italians had cups, coins, clubs, and swords, and the Germans had hearts, bells, <laughs> acorns, and leaves. But it was the French who created the established suits card. we know today. Hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Thanks, Thought Bubble. So what about that joker we usually see in a deck of cards? Well, the US was responsible for that. The card started out as the highest trump card in Euchre, and then was adopted into poker as a wild card and renamed the Joker. Poker is one of the most well-known betting games. Poker can trace its ancestry back to the 16th century with the Spanish game of Primero, nicknamed Poker's Month. <laughs> by the 17th century, the French had a popular betting game known as Pogue, and by the 18th century, Germans had a similar game called Hoken. These two games established betting and bluffing mechanics that would become a key component to modern poker. French colonists brought Pogue to Canada, which then followed immigrants as they traveled down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. It eventually spread throughout the country in gaming parlors on riverboats. It was growing rapidly in popularity, and in 1834, Jonathan H. Green, different John Green, wrote that this new cheating game was dominating the boats and replacing the popular three-card Monty games, and went on to coin the term poker in his book on gaming. And the game of poker continued to spread, becoming a staple in western saloons. Poker had continued to increase in popularity, spawning versions like Seven Card Stud and Texas Hold'em, solidifying its place within the gambling community. Now, before I reach modern times, we should also briefly cover the origin of trading card games. Trading card games are defined as games that are like mass-produced to be purchased cards. and incorporated <laughs> within a player's deck for strategic play. The first real trading card game, or TCG, was the Baseball Card Game, published in 1904 by the Allegheny Card Company. The game consisted of 104 player cards that deck builders could supposedly collect to compete within the game. But because this game was only a prototype and never mass produced, the deck building component was never fully realized. 1993 saw the first modern trading card game. Magic the Gathering. Invented by game designer and math professor Dr. Richard Garfield, the entire initial 2.6 million print run sold out within the first month, encouraging the publisher, Wizards of the Coast, to print another 7.3 million mm. cards before its official release. Another 35 million That's cards crazy. will be printed between 1993 and 2007. And as of 2015, there are 13,651 different cards in 11 languages, attracting an estimated 20 million players. In 1996, <laughs> the Pokemon trading card game was released in Japan by Media Factory. Now, there were other Pokemon sets before this, but this was the first set based on the Pokemon video games and would eventually be brought to the US in 2003. As of 2015, there are a total of 125 Pokemon trading card game sets, and nearly 15 billion, billion of these cards have been produced worldwide. There is even an official Pokemon league where States. players can compete against others in their community. And the Pokemon card game is so popular that it switched roles and became the inspiration for several Pokemon card game video games, including Pokemon TCG Online and Pokemon Card GB2. So what makes the TCG so popular? Well, Mark Rosewater, the head designer for Magic the Gathering, stated it was the player's ability to customize and personalize their decks with a near endless supply of cards for success. He said, if you compare it to something like Monopoly, every time mm -hmm. you play, you're getting a pretty similar experience. But what's neat about 
about magic is that the game itself keeps changing. It's about exploring, and you get to constantly rediscover it. And people have certainly continued to discover it. According to 2008 sales data, trading card games earn around $800 million just in North America. But it's not just the sales and prevalence of these games that make them significant. They are also having an impact on our lives. Human Computer Interaction Assistant Professor Jeff Kaufman from Carnegie Mellon conducted a study in 2015 that used a new research method known as embedded game design in a series of card games. Kaufman wanted to see if he could decrease gender biases in people by including pro-equality messages in card games without making those messages too blatant. He found that his games encouraged people to have increased social identity complexity, which is basically a measure of tolerance in groups. Players All tended to think more broadly game. and inclusively isn't about that, social groups. They also had stronger and more assertive responses to multiple kinds of social bias. Basically, the games encourage participants to embrace diversity. It may not always be as obvious in a game like Pokemon TCG or Yu-Gi-Oh, but the study helps to show the small role card games may play in bringing people together. Playing cards and their games have continued to have a hold on the public and players. There are many major card games we didn't even have a chance to talk about, like Blackjack, <laughs> Gin Rummy, even Uno. Uh, all four, and of course trading card games like Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG and the classic Legend of the Five Rings. And while you play games with physical cards with people in the same room, one unique aspect of the modern age is the digital card game. In Blizzard's Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft, players go online to play and collect TCG cards as they would in real life. The difference of course is that there's nothing physical to own, yeah, but fun. the cards come with uh, animations uh, and sounds. The game is increasing in popularity and shows the merger between modern tech and traditional gaming mechanics. Regardless, the point is cards and card games games have forever changed gaming even in the modern age. They show no signs of stopping and are even responsible for some of our video games. Remember those century old Hanafudu cards that was made by that company called Nintendo? Who now has Pokemon? Who is card games and video games? That's full circle right there. Isn't that right Evie? You are Evie, <laughs> right? We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. There, yeah, there Crash Course Games is filming impact a whole bunch of different areas that you may have not thought of initially. So. I thought that uh, video was quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. So uh, next up, we're going to be covering our games for today. So just like he said, any nowadays you can find most, uh, every, everything, you know, either on any mobile device or computer. It's just amazing what uh, computers and technology has allowed us to do and accomplish. So um, let's get right in there. So first up is uh, the good old game, Crazy Eights. <laughs> Do you like Uno? You'll love Crazy Eights. This popular <laughs> card game's objective is to get rid of all of your cards by playing them strategically. Some features include, uh, um, for this app in particular, it's playing multiplayer, so you can play with your friends or against other players or the computer. And there's also a league system. So you, um, you know, there's a competitive aspect as well, which is, um, quite fun, and if you play enough and win enough, you earn certain in-game rewards. So um, before we get into the app, let's just see how the original Crazy 8 played, and let's see how it compares to this mobile version. So it's quite similar. Um, um, the only difference is that the original um, Crazy 8s was played with um, their standard deck of cards, but the digital version, it's more like Uno in some respects. So uh, we'll see, we'll see it. <laughs> when you run an outlaw business, you know your CRM can make or break your ability to grow. That Crazy Eights is a two to five player card game where players try to get rid of all their cards first and score the fewest points. The game starts with the dealer dealing five cards face down to each player. The remaining cards go in the middle of the table for the draw pile. And the top card is flipped face up next to the pile. The player on the dealer's left goes first. On a player's turn, they must play a card from their hand on top of the discard pile. Players can play any card that matches the suit or rank of the top face up card. For example, if the top card is the five of spades, the player could discard any spade or five from their hand. If they can't play a card, they can draw up to three cards from the draw pile. If they draw a card that they can play, they must play it on the discard pile. If they don't draw a card they can play, their turn is over. Eights are wild cards and can be played on top of any card. Mm -hmm. When a player plays an eight, they choose the new suit for the discard pile. And the next player must play a card of that suit or an eight. 
Play continues clockwise until one player runs out of cards in their hand. When a player empties their hand, each player that still has cards counts the points in their hand and writes their total score down. Aces are worth one point. Face cards are worth 10 points. Eights are worth 50 points. And the rest of the cards are worth their face value. Players continue playing rounds until one player reaches 100 points or more. At that point, whoever has the fewest number of points wins the game. So that's how the original um, Crazy Eights was played. So let's see how the uh, digital version compares. What I can tell you now, it's a lot easier. There's not a point system. It's more yeah. like Uno, but it's still the same concepts. Mm -hmm. So I'm in order to download <laughs> the app. As always, you're going to go to the App Store on your iPad. And in the App Store, you're going to hit the search button at the bottom right. And then type in the name or type of app that you like to download. So um, I'm going to go ahead and type in crazy eights. So eight as the number S, crazy eights. And of course, there are different versions um, of it. Of course, but the one um, I find I think is the sleekest and easiest to use. It's on my end, it's at the top right, Crazy Eights card game, a card game for Uno players. So you're gonna go ahead and um, hit get in order to download the app, and then you're gonna um, open it and, um, and play it. So let's play some Crazy Eights, you guys. <laughs> so yeah, once you open the app, um, it's just uh, downloading some files. I haven't asked you, would you like uh, it to track your activity? Yes or no, up to you. And then look for a personalized experience, sign into your account. So um, you'll be able to play with your friends, exchange gifts, get some gifts, synchronize your data. If you'd like to, it's really easy to sign in with your Apple ID, but I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, play as a guest for now. Um, Yeah, so welcome to the first community of crazy eight players. Every day in chips with a daily bonus, and there's 5,000 free chips for a good start. So look, they tell you about the tournament um, that they're doing. Um, so you'll learn more as you play the game. And um, here's here's the uh, home screen. So again, it looks it's very visually appealing, and I uh, enjoy looking at it. Um, this is going to be your home screen. So at the top left, you can view different um, options like the leagues, your friends, the different settings. So uh, you can turn music on. You can turn it off. You can, there's even a tutorial as well on how to play um, the game. So let's uh, really quick go into this tutorial and see how to do it. So there are two, two to four players. Each player starts with 10 cards. The arrows indicate the direction of play and you have 10 seconds to discard or receive uh, a penalty card. And make sure you get rid of all your cards first. You play a card that matches the color or value on the discard pile. If you cannot play, draw a card. Pretty simple, there are special plays. You can play an identical card to the one on the discard pile and it lets you play another card. Um, and if you have a sequence, like you see one, two, three, four, you can play them all in a row. The eight lets you change the color. So just like in the video, if you can change the color, if you play an eight, then there's a skip card. And if you play 10, you can play another card as well. Last but not least, there is a draw card. Um, so they can either hit, uh, either do a plus four or play an eight to not have to draw two. And there is the reverse card um, as well. It changes the direction. So uh, without further ado, let's just play a game. And, and see how this works. So let's, let's hope you win. <laughs> Would you like to watch an ad video to double the points? You can do it or not. I'm not gonna watch it. They'll make you watch it for longer if you decide to, but um, it is a free game. So there are gonna be some ads, but again, you just look for the X um, to exit out of the ad. You yeah, like ch challenging online players, get rid of your cards to win the game. <laughs> yep. 
So I can either play the one in blue or I can play an orange card. So I'm gonna go ahead and play an orange card. So you double tap on the card in your hand to play the card. So you see it's quite fast. <laughs> Again, I can either play the nine to change the color or I can play um, a pink card. So I'm gonna play a pink card. Yeah, you see it's quite fast. Again, make sure you um, select your card before that 10 seconds are up. So you see, he just they just plus two'd me. <laughs> so you, uh, every, every game is gonna be different, but it's fast paced. You really gotta think on your toes. But it's quite rewarding just looking at the different options. And it's cool that they light up the cards that, um, that you can play. So you don't have to do too much looking in order to um, figure out what you like to play. Two. So you reverse it back to um, the other person. I'm gonna play the one because if I have the seven um, and they play, they don't play something or if they play another seven, I can switch it to another color without having to use my eight. Yeah, and then I can play the eight because eight comes after seven. I'm going to pick green because I have more green in my hand. I'm going to play the two and then the three. Look, and we have last card. So because I, I cannot play the card, I have to draw a card. And I can't play it, so it's the next person's turn. <laughs> so you see, we almost had it, you guys. But it's, um, you know, you just get to play again. And, you know, you'll uh, just keep learning tricks and uh, learn how to really manage your hand um, in this game. So it sounds, it, you know, it's much better with the music, but I want to be able to say stuff while uh, um, I do the tutorial. But yeah, that's that's. Um, pretty much how you play again, there's a different news um, that you can look at, like from the game, there are different messages. So look, daily bonus. Um, would you like to receive a notification when a friend sends you a gift? Cool, I'll do that. Allow notifications. Um, you can watch ad videos to get free chips, but if you play the game and you, know, you win, then you know, you'll get chips anyway, so it's up to you. Um, again, there are some ads, so, you know, just keep, keep that in mind. Uh, just make sure you hit the X. Be really specific on hitting the X, so that way you can get out the ad. But yes, there's the uh, Coral Cup, which is, uh, um, again, an, a tournament that's available. There's also um, the league. So, um, again, when you um, um, keep winning, you get to go up the league and you get to win uh, in-game rewards. Um, if you hit solo or with friends, you can either play against the computer or you can play with the friends that you have on the game. So, um, so yeah, I would try exploring it. It's pretty cool to play uh, Crazy Eights, but just a modern version on your iPad, right? <laughs> so check it out. Um, next up, uh, we will be talking about Sticky Solitaire tri -peaks. So this game offers over 3,000 levels to wander and win free points. Train your brain, playing alongside Tiki in the free solitaire game. Travel through the levels to see the most stunning visuals as you play. And if you like classic card games like Mojong, Pyramid, Solitaire, and Puzzle games, you'll have a grand time playing Tiki, Solitaire, Tri Peaks. So it's a little bit of Mojong a little bit of pyramid, a little bit of solitaire, but it's also kind of like a puzzle game all in one. So um, there's actually a modern version it's called um, Tri Peaks Solitaire. So again, let's watch a video on how to play this version of solitaire and see how it again compares to the modern. There's version. one simple hearing hack anyone can use to get rid of tinnitus in let. Tri Peak Solitaire is a fun solitaire variation where you try to destroy different pyramids or peaks by removing cards from them. This to set up fun. the game, first, place three cards face down on the table, each in their own pile. 
Then, place two cards face down below each of those three cards, followed by three cards face down below each pair of two cards, so you have three pyramids. Finally, make a fourth row with ten face-up cards that connects each of the pyramids. Place the rest of the cards to the side to make the stockpile. To play the game, flip the top card on the stockpile face up. Then, look for face up cards you can remove from the pyramids. Mm -hmm. You can move any face up card so that is one rank two, above or below the face eight. up stockpile card onto that card. The suit and color of the cards don't matter in this version of Solitaire. If both of the face up cards blocking a face down card in a pyramid are removed, flip the face down card face up. If you run out of moves, flip up the next face down card on the stockpile. You can do this as many times as you need to. If you run out of face down cards in the stockpile, flip over the face up cards and cycle through them again. Keep playing until you remove all of the cards from the pyramids or get mm -hmm. stuck and can't make any more moves. So yeah, that's <laughs> um, Tri-Peaks Solitaire. So now let's see what the modern version or digital version um, has. So again, we're gonna go to the App Store. When you go to the App Store, you're gonna hit the search button in the search bar and type in Tiki. Solitaire tri piece. Again, as soon as I typed in Tiki, it popped up right here. So all I do is tap on it, and it's right there at the top right. It's, it's oh, it has over 120,000 ratings. So this is, um, as you can see, the number 47 card game that's on the App Store. So very, very popular. So we're going to go ahead and download it, and let's open it and play some uh, tri peaks Solitaire. <laughs> Again, I love the visuals in this game. Yeah, like continue play your brain to our terms and service, sure. Um, yeah, again, yes or no, allowing to track your activity. Up to you. And there you go. So this is uh, Tiki Solitaire tri -piece. So I have played this on my iPad before. So um, I uh, am up to level 45. I'm gonna go ahead and go to, um, I'm gonna go to the first level so you guys get an idea of uh, how the game works out. So. Um, it's loading up, so just give it one second. <laughs> so let's go back to the first level. When you open the game, it'll give you a tutorial on how the game works. But again, I'm going to go to the first level and um, show you how it works. Of course, there are events, there are different um, you know, um, power upgrades you can get, there are different things regarding coins and little things. It's, it's quite, it's you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do besides playing the actual game, which is quite fun. So, um, again, I'm going to go ahead and go to the first level. And you see the same setup. One card, and then uh, two on top of it, then three, and then ten. So, again, you can either go up or down by one. So, um, A, you can either go to it um, from an A to a two or an A to an A. But all the other ones, they're, they're sequential. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King. So because I have the Queen as the first card, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the audio so you can hear me. Yeah. Um, again, you can then, um, <clears throat> again, because I have a Queen at the bottom, I can either put a Jack or a King on top of that Queen. So look, I have a King right here. And then um, I can then either do a, uh, go back to a queen or go to an ace. So look, I'm gonna do this ace over here so that way this middle card above it can be opened. And look, I can then go back, to, uh, either do a two or I can do a king. So I have a two right here. 
And then again, I can either go to a three or go back to an ace. So um, I will do the ace since I have more than one. Um, there are no more options. So I hit the deck on the left-hand side to open a new card. So there's 10, I need a jack or a nine. So I don't have either of those. So I can move on to the next card. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's, your luck can be either really great or <laughs> really not. <laughs> So you just keep going. I need a six or a four. I don't have either. There's a 10, another 10. I don't need that. There you go, eight, <laughs> finally. So I can uh, go to a seven. So I'll do this seven. And then let me do an eight right here to open that spot. And then I can go back to a seven. And then I can go back to an eight. And you just keep going. So there's a two, I can either go to the ace or I can go to a three. I'll go to the three because if I do the ace, even though two cards open up, um, I might not have an option. So I'll do the three right here to open that. And then I will do the four over here and do the three, then the four, then the five, then the six. So look, you get bonuses for doing multiple cards at the same time. Mm -hmm. um so there you go uh jack so i can let's do um oh. let's do it through the queen because i can get rid of more cards that way so queen king ace two so i keep going there's nine so i can do ten i can do nine, nine. and again i keep going king or jack nope <coughs> there's there's a jack i can put the queen on there and king and ace and I need a four or a six or a 10 or an eight. <laughs> There's a six. And I keep going. I need an eight. There you go. For the nine. I need a four or a two, a five or a seven. There's a seven. And I need a queen or a 10. Mm. <laughs> so sometimes it happens so um you can either use some coins to get more cards or you see at the bottom left or you can use a wild card at the um bottom right hand side so you earn those by playing the game but let's just get some more cards we need a 10 or a queen there you go <laughs> it even congratulates you for getting the last one so let's do the jack and there you go Good game. And you get certain stars based on um, the streak, the speed that you do it, and if you reach the goal for that level. So um, that's kind of how it works. There are different types of cards, you know, little variations. So when you get to that new type of card, um, uh, it'll claim to you have, sometimes there's, like a, if you open this card or get to this card, you can, um, uh, get additional cards in your deck, things of that nature. So um, as you can see, it's, it, was, it was so fun when I played it. So just because of this training, I might start playing it again because it does get a little more difficult each time, but um, it's uh, quite fun and interesting to see what combinations of cards you can do. So, so yeah, um, just explore it, you know, through, through uh, the different buttons that you can see and see what you like. So like inbox is like messages or rewards. You can get a reward every day. You can see the different messages. You can see all the news regarding the, the game. Free coins. So there's even, uh, look, I can collect that. And look, there's even a jackpot section. So you can actually um, this play this game that kind of looks like uh, the price is right with the Slink hours, but uh, you can actually play by either getting free um, free uh, coins from the game, or you can pay a certain amount of in-game coins to drop. So if I drop this coin, and let's see where it goes. So you can get different power-ups, or you can uh, possibly win the jackpot. So I just won a wild card for uh, playing the game. You can also watch videos to get free drops as well. So just explore it. You never know what you'll see. Uh, last up for today, before we go on to our questions, 
is a skip bow. <laughs> there are new and exciting ways to play skip bow, a fun card game with a solitaire twist. Skip bow is a fun and competitive card game for all card game lovers. Hundreds of fun and challenging levels that will keep your mind active and train your brain are waiting for you to explore. You can solve satisfying puzzles in this solitaire variation by stacking cards in sequence and clearing the board to win. So like before, we're gonna watch a quick video on how to play Skip Bow. So the uh, original version of the game. When you get your next big idea, say sparkly ketchup. Skip Bow is a fun card game that can be played with two to six people. Skip Bow is a fun card game that can be played with two to six people. The goal of the game is to get rid of your cards before all of the other players. To play, you'll need a deck of cards designed specifically mm -hmm. for Skip Bow. First, shuffle the cards and deal each player their hand. For a two to four player game, deal each player 30 cards. Yeah. For a five to six player game, deal each player yeah, 20 cards. Yeah, there's a lot cards. of cards in that package. <laughs> Keep your cards I, face I down in a, a pile. Elementary school. There's, except there's for so the top fun. card, which you should flip up. Place the leftover cards face down in the center of the oh, table. Oh, a lot of cards. The player to the left of the dealer goes first. To start your turn, draw from the face down pile in the center of the table until you have five cards. Then, see if you can play any of your cards, including the face up yep. card, on your pile or one of the four piles in the center of the playing area. The one with the one on it, that's the one you want to get rid in of. In order to play one, one of your cards on a center pile, it must be the next card in ascending order. So one through twelve. Skip bow cards are wild and can be used as any card. To start a new center pile on the table, you must play a 1. Everything starts with a 1. If you put a 12 on a pile, the pile is discarded and the space opens up for a new pile to start. There can only be four piles on the table at one time. If you play a card from the top of your personal pile, flip up the next card in the pile. Continue your turn until you're unable to play any more cards. Then, discard a card from your hand. Every player has four discard piles. You can stack discarded cards and play them mm -hmm. on the so center like piles resource. as long as they're at the top of the discarded stack. If you manage to play all five of the cards in your hand in one turn, draw again. Draw another five Keep cards going. from the deck and it's continue so playing. Once a player discards, it's the player to their left's turn. Play continues until one player plays all of the cards in their personal pile. Whoever runs out of cards in their personal pile first wins. Yeah. So kind of like solitaire, kind of not just a, uh, a really interesting variation. So um, again, in order to download the Skipbo app, you're going to want to go to the app store, go to the search bar and type in Skipbo. Quite simple. So you type in Skipbo and again, you see that it has over 104,000 ratings and it's actually the number 22 card game on the app store. So even more popular than a tri -piece. So you're going to want to download it and open the app. Uh, just kind of so like again, you. yeah, same thing. Um, you can allow your activity or not. So um, it's downloading the <coughs> update. So this will happen um, the first time that you download and open the app. So it just takes just a few moments. Yep, uh, please read our end user license agreement. Cool, agree. Would you like notifications? Yep. 
And then you can, it says, have you played Skippo before? Yes or no. So uh, let's say no. Welcome to Skippo Classic. Look, your opponent is ready. Let's start. The first player to empty their stockpile wins the game. Like the video said, we start with the one. So we tap on the one, and then two, and the three. We need that in order to play the four. It's again in our in our discard um, or our um, pile that we need. So look, there's we have a two, then we have a three, and then look, this four right here is more important because again we need to get rid of all these uh, cards on the left hand side to win the game. So this four is more important than the one in our hand. Yeah, there's nothing left to do, it's time to end your turn. You do that by discarding one card from your hand. Okay, so they placed some cards, but they didn't have anything else, so they discarded a seven. At the beginning of every turn, you'll draw back up to five cards automatically. Try to clear all these start cards and win the game. So look, five, six, then seven, and then look, eight, and we can play the four from the four and play this last card. So that's how you win. <laughs> yep, so now it's gonna be three players. Look, it says skip both cards are wild. We can use this one as a one. Yep, we'll turn on the music. And we can play the two, and then we can play the three. Uh, we don't have a four, so let's place one of our cards down in the discard. So you see, they're, they're going. And it's back to our turn. So we can play the five in our hand or the five from the pile. We'd want to do it from our hand because we want to have a chance of starting a new hand to, get, to keep playing. So we're going to put the five here six here and then now let's put the seven and then eight nine ten bam look a new hand <laughs> isn't that fun so you get to keep playing cards until we can no longer play so i don't have a four or a three or an eleven so i can place this card in this discard pile and you keep going So again, this is just a tutorial, just showing you in a very simple way on how to play skip bow. So I'm gonna place this four, place this five, place this six, place this seven. And just to show you all, you can actually stack cards on your discard. So, cause we have a nine here. Oh, wow. Look, the stock card can be used now. Don't miss it. You see, I missed the 12. They could have gone on the 11. <laughs> so it's cool that they mm -hmm. gave you that reminder. So now we're gonna put the three and do the one. So look, we won. <laughs> Fantastic. So you see, it's just telling you, um, you know, it seems like you have a handle on this. Now, are you ready for a real challenge? <laughs> yeah, for real. So now look, challenge. now it's four players all together. So oh. this is the last one in the tutorial. So again, a one, and we don't have a two or another one. So I'm gonna place this seven down in the discard. So I actually uh, lost this the first time that I did it for the four player one. So let's hope I win on the first go this time, right? <laughs> um, we, we don't have a three or a two. So we're gonna put another card down. So you just can see what they're doing and just plan your move out in advance. So uh, let's hope that they keep a three open so I can put that four from the discard pile and put that five from uh, my stock cards. So look, that's what they did. Four, I can put the five, I can put this four. I don't have a one, but I can start getting rid of cards from my hand. So there's six, there's seven, there's eight, and I don't have anything else left to do. So I'll put this six. Oh, okay, I see. So you see, I'm just using my finger to drag the cards. It's very simple. So let's hope that one stays. I need, I need my two to be gone. 
There we go. There's my two. Put it on there. I can put the eight here. Shoot, I don't have a nine, y'all. Man, we're one number yeah. away from winning. <laughs> we do have huh? these though. But look, that other, the other um, computer, they see that one won. Look at you. You have yourself a ball. Yeah, so close, but you have what it takes. Try again. I'm pretty sure that they do it on purpose just to see how the other, you know, you could win. You see, this time we get a whole wild card, <laughs> skip vote card. So look, one, two, there's oh, okay. three. I could do this four as, as again, as a wild, the five, six. Look, you see him, I only need two more cards to go. So let's hope. Mm. I was I was hoping they didn't have that that 10. <laughs> but you see, same thing with them. They the Olivia only has two cards left in her stock cards. Same thing with the uh, Charlotte right here. And look, we don't even have a nine. Oh my god, what kind of luck is that? <laughs> yeah, the eight. So yeah, that's all I can do. So let me just put this eight down here. Let's hope that we draw a nine. Six. It's much more fun with the music, but I'm still having fun anyway. <laughs> so look, nine, let's do the 10. Yeah. And then look, seven, eight, there you go. We got it, y'all. <laughs> oh, you want? Oh. Okay. Yeah, because I got rid of all my cards on the left. I, if I didn't do that, the other people would have definitely won first. So look, you okay. completed the challenge. Enjoy the rest of your adventure. So I hope you enjoy Skipbook Classic. Feel free to look around. So uh, you can play online, you can play offline, and uh, you can play with friends. So that's the village portion right here. At the bottom, the second one, this is actually where the game starts. So welcome to Skip Bow Adventure. This is a whole new way to play the Skip Bow you know and love. It's a great way to relax and helps to keep your brain in tip top shape. We hope you like it. So they give you 10 free um, tickets and you also have a free adventure bonus to collect. So yep, I'll take some uh, free coins. <laughs> <laughs> and then look, you can go back to the village if you'd like. <laughs> Or you can look at your messages, like with your friends, your inbox. You can also, here at the bottom right, um, you can purchase additional coins. But why just, just play the game? <laughs> so let's go back to the adventure and let's see how this skip boat adventure starts. So of course you have some power-ups available in the later levels, but let's start with level one. So it's kind of like solitaire, but in a skip bow fashion. So we start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And look, skip bows are wild again. So let's use this as an eight and put it here in the nine, and the 10, 11, and 12. So there you go. That's, that's kind of how it, you know, the real basic version of the single player version of skip bow, it's the same idea but uh, just, uh, you know, just you. And it's, it's quite fun. So let's do level two and see how this works. So you need a one on the building pile before you can add the two. So just like solitaire, you can draw some cards. They give you two cards instead of just one. So there's the one. Hmm. Hold on. Um, can you all hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I'm just uh, just making sure. I uh, I heard uh, someone going out, so I just wanted to make sure that everything was good. So let's go back to the game. Um, so we just put a one. Let's put the two on here. Let's put the three. And look, again, once you fully uncover a card, it opens up. So look, we don't have an eight. So um, I can't use this 12, so I have to open some new cards. There's an 8, there's a 9, there's a 10, there's 11, there's 12. And look, the building pile will be cleared when it reaches 12. Then you can start from 1 again. So there's 1. And there you go. If you win, you earn coins. 
if you don't, you can just try again. May 12. So let's do uh, one more level, you all. <laughs> so you see it's, it's, uh, the, it's the variations change. You see now there's an acorn or a hazelnut. <laughs> so, so for some levels, you have to uncover it to complete the level. So you don't even have to get all of the cards. You just have to get to that card to win. So we're going to want to focus on this middle pile. So first the one, then the two, then the three. You don't have a four, so let's draw. And uh, we don't have a four again, so let's draw again. There's a four, there's a five, six, and seven. So look, we opened the, we opened the hazelnut, and uh, any additional cards are extra points. Wow! So yeah, th there are some variations as well mm -hmm. on this game. So uh, so yeah, you can either hit next or you can hit the X to go to the next level. But as you can see. It's uh, kind of like Candy Crush. I know some of you played Candy Crush before, but it's just the skip bow version. And, and you know, it involves, you know, um, the card management, resource management. So it's, it's quite interesting, especially when you get into the further levels. So you see there are lots and lots of sets of levels, probably over 3,000 that you can play. You get bonuses um, <clears throat> for um, um, all the stars that you're earning. So you get to get free bonuses. And again, it's uh, quite fun. You can uh, sign in. And I know there's other portions of the game as well if you sign in um, and play online or create an account. So yeah, just explore this app and see how it works out for you. 